Hello, everyone. I'm here today with James Reynolds, who is the founder of Viravo, which consists of three search engine marketing agencies, SEO Sherpa, SEO Partner, and ClickJam. He is also the host of the Traffic Jam podcast. James is fanatical about all things search, social, and content on the web, from his blog to Twitter and LinkedIn. He is a contributor to several leading publications, including Entrepreneur Magazine and Mentors Startup Companies in his free time. And today, we are going to be talking about link building done right. James, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited for this, David. Um, thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah, super excited. Uh, so many of these podcasts coincide with what's just going on in our daily life as far as our marketing company, and uh, this is... Uh, right, <laughs> right at the right time for uh, me to start talking with somebody like you and, and clear the air and some things. So very, very excited to uh, dig into all of this. And um, from looking into everything that you've accomplished and currently do, I, I think you're the right person to talk to. <laughs> Let's hope so. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so too. Uh, all right. Well, cool. But, but before we get into examples of how to accomplish getting links built. Um, just can you just generally talk about the importance of links? There's a lot of you hear some people say they're important. You have other people, you know, kind of downplay them, and it, you know, it's just. But we all know they're they're important at the end of the day. So can you can you kind of dig into that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think the importance is played down a little bit, but um, let's not make any mistake. Links are the primary ranking factor that Google used to, you know, understand the authority and the relevance of a web page in relation to any particular topic. Um, you know, if in effect, what Google are doing with links and how they monitor them is uh, considering links as votes. So any third party website linking to your own is seen by a by Google as a vote in their eyes. And generally speaking, the more links that you have to your web page, the higher that, higher that page will rank in Google. Um, now, whilst Google don't actually publish this anywhere, they have um, mentioned it a few times, um, sort of in passing. And then there have been a whole bunch of studies as well um, that have really correlated the number of links um, to a particular website with its ranking in the search results. And I think most recently, a few of those have been um, a really great study by Stone Temple Consulting and another one by um, Ahrefs. And there really is pretty much a direct correlation between the number of links to a web page and its ranking within Google. So, yeah, extremely okay, important. Cool. Yeah, thanks for clearing that up because I know there's I know there's a lot of other ranking factors, you know, page, you know, how many pages people visit, how long the dwell time, how long they stay on the site. Um, all those things, and and I think Google was downplaying them to kind of get rid of um, some of the ill-advised practices that were going on. That that's just kind of my guess. You always got to try to read between the lines of why yeah. and what Google is doing. So I appreciate you clearing that up. And and again, that kind of leads me to to my next you know question here, and you know some of the confusion you know that has been generated of these past five to six years in regards to talk about importance of links, not links, it, it is the deal with, you know, black hat and white hat ways of accomplishing getting links. Yeah. Uh, not, not to mention all the Google updates that are happening, you know, seemingly every day. I know that's, an, you know, a bit of an overstatement, but they do, they are often. So <laughs> c can you please clear the air about what used to be done that should not be practiced any longer? Yeah, I mean, literally anything that is um, automated, um, self-built or paid for should generally be avoided. And this all comes out of the um, industry that was born out of Google's reliance on links to measure a, a site and a page's authority. You know, of course, marketers got very smart to the fact that that was what Google were measuring as their primary ranking factor. And they found ways to build links en masse um, perhaps in a fashion that Google didn't intend um, the um, the analysis of a link um, to be in the first place. You know, they generally wanted to measure if someone places an editorial link from their site to a third party site, um, they are essentially endorsing that piece of content um, that they're linking to and that should be seen as a ranking factor. Um, but of course then, you know, with all these people then trying to trick the system, um, build links that weren't, you know, genuinely placed um, using automation, using tools, etc. 
etc um, mm-hmm. Google over time got pretty smart to those tactics and um, mm-hmm. really nowadays anything like that you know doesn't work you have to be able to acquire links in a genuine fashion um, and that's really going to come down to having great content that people want to link to and then finding a way to market that content to get it in front of the eyes of those people that generally do link out to relevant content um, I think some of the, I mean, if we want to cover some of the things that really you know should be avoided in in my experience one would be um, blog networks that was a real um, you know hot link building tactic in years gone by um, and you know, in those days when you could use blog networks, it was literally a case of creating a bit of content, um, uploading it to a blog network automation system that, you know, that system would then kind of spin the content into multiple f- uh, formats and it would literally blast it out to thousands of sites, all with links pointing back to your own, your own domain. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, um, you know, Google know that <laughs> links built in that fashion are not genuine, so they've really cut down on that. Um, other things like you know mass forum submissions and definitely anything that involves any payment for links um, you should absolutely avoid because all of those things are you know against Google's terms and conditions. Gotcha. Yeah, I see that offer all the time, the forum submission one. Um, and I, I, you know, six seven years ago I might have bitten. Now it's like leave me alone, right? Yeah. Because it, you know, so those are the kinds of things that we need to tell people to stay away from. If you have a company that comes to you and mentions, you know blasting out to thousands of forms or um, blog networks or even uh, the companies that come and say we can improve your SEO by building you links without mentioning anything about you know a content plan or anything though those are the key indicators for kind of a lay person that's not super technical that we can have them raise some eyebrows and say no this is not the way to go is, is that is that what I'm hearing yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, and you've got to genuinely earn your place at the top of the SERPs now. Um, mm-hmm. You can't trick your way or fool your way up the rankings if you don't genuinely deserve to be placed there. So you do have to take a step back a little bit and you know focus on content, um, focus on mm-hmm. user experience, create something that genuinely deserves to be placed number one in the SERPs for a particular keyword. Uh, search that matches the content if you want to appear there Um, Mm -hmm. once you've got that in place then embark on link building because that's what will move the needle up the search results but you need to have the quality experience the great content there in the first place you know the two things must go hand in hand awesome and we'll definitely we'll definitely get into the meat of this podcast which is getting getting links built but i did want to kind of just set the stage and cover some basics here before you go to that step so yep. we, we kind of know what people shouldn't be doing or, you know, give them some awareness of when they're approached by companies who are going to do it wrong for them. So now moving on to um, getting your website set up correctly. Make sure your basically your house is in order, everything's structurally correct before you start, you know, really putting any marketing efforts or dollars out there. So what should be considered here to make sure everything is set up correctly on your website before you – you know, you go into your link building efforts. I think the first thing would be all the technical stuff. Um, you certainly want to make sure that Google can actually crawl your website before you embark on link building. Um, mm-hmm. you know, if they can't crawl the site, analyze the content, and detect all of those signals, then of course, um, link building is not going to make the dime of difference. So. Um, looking over the technical components, making sure there's no crawl errors, um, making sure that the site is actually indexed, you know, should certainly do all of those things um, in advance. Um, Mm -hmm. Then moving on from that would be covering off then um, user experience. Um, This is something that Google are you know, are super interested in. They want to make sure, of course, that if they send any traffic off to a website that the user is going to um, meet a really good experience when they arrive at that site. Um, Mm -hmm. And some of the primary things to to look at now would, of course, be the user experience on mobile devices, Um, Mm mobile tablets, um, you know, the virtual device. Um, So much of Internet usage is moving that way. Search habits are certainly moving that way. Um, You want to make sure that your site is working across all devices that people would um, access it on. Um, Mm -hmm. And then from there, you want to make sure that you've actually got genuinely good um, relevant content that's going to 
um, give a quality answer to the queries that you actually want to rank for. And uh, I'm sure we are going to get into content a little bit a bit later on, but mm -hmm. you know, making sure that you literally have the best possible content um, within your market, within your niche that actually deserves to rank. Uh, and you need to have all of those things in place before you get going with LinkedIn link building because if you build um, links without quality content um, you're not going to rank if you have quality content without links you're not going to rank you know all of those things need to work in unison together mm -hmm. so and, and I think a lot of these we can point somebody if they're just getting started I, I believe you can go to just the Google webmaster tools if I'm not mistaken that'll help with making sure your site map and everything is set up correctly is there anywhere else you can point people to um, yeah that um, you know to make sure all everything you mentioned is is set up correctly yeah i mean there's a bunch of um external third-party tools that are great for you know site analysis um some of our favorites are moz um it's actually very you know user-friendly interface moz and um ideal for someone who's you know not that not that technical um it will mm -hmm. you know point off all the errors there um our current favorite if you're a bit more of an avid seo is a tool called onpage.org um that's really fantastic it's a bit more for the um advanced user but that will point out you know all of the technical um issues um and then just mm -hmm. generally for for site experience um i would certainly encourage people to put their website through the google mobile friendly test um, to see mm -hmm. if it passes Google's mobile guidelines, and okay. also to do Google's page speed test. Um, not something we mentioned just then, but actually how quickly your site loads um, is a very important factor that relates to user experience, and um, uh, that you can find just by Googling um, a page speed tool by Google, and you'll, you'll see uh, how Google grades your site, and also offer you some you know, fixes that you can pass on to your developer for you know, improving site speed. Okay, awesome. Appreciate that. And, and one thing to throw in, I just saw within the last week is the uh, Google's going to start dinging, uh, especially mobile um, sites or you know viewing on a mobile platform uh, pop-ups. Yeah. So um, I guess we can dig into that another time, but it's you know just coming up, so you're going to need to find some other ways to you know get get any sort of banner or button that you want to display. But uh, for sure, everyone out there, uh, on, on especially on the mobile um, views of your website, watch out for pop-ups starting January 10th. Um, so, okay, moving on to um, the value of links. I believe all links are not the same. So can you right. ex explain how search engines assign value to links? Yeah. Um, I mean, essentially, they use a variety of um, factors, both to determine you know, how valuable a link is in terms of the authority it should pass um, and also the strength of signal that it passes in relation to um, a particular page ranking for a certain keyword. Um, so the first thing that they would look at is the authority of the um, website linking to your web page. Um, mm -hmm. And Google will, you know, evaluate the overall authority of a site and they'll also evaluate the overall authority of the page um, linking to your website. And um, that's influenced in turn by the amount of links and quality of links that that website has linking to its own site and its own page. Um, now, if we use a, a nice simple example, you know, a, a link from, I don't know, let's say, you know, uh, the, you know, the Wall Street Journal or bbc.co.uk, you know, very established, well-known websites, they would pass a lot more authority than a web, you know, a link from you know Mama Jones's cookery blog, for instance. You know, they're much mm -hmm. more established, trustworthy sites that, in turn, can pass more of that trust, more of that authority to your site when they link through to you. So that gotcha. Will, that will be the first um, factor. The second one is the actual relevancy of the um, link. So, if you have a cookery website, if you are being linked to from other cookery websites. Um, that is going to have more value to you than if you get links from an automotive website because it's on topic and it's, um, and it's relevant. So Google are going to look at the overall theme of the website linking to you and they're also going to look at you know, the text or content that surrounds the link that's pointing to your site to get a gauge of um, you know, whether that link endorsement is for a topic that relates to your site or one that it doesn't. Um, and you certainly want to keep an eye on this. If you get too many links from off-topic websites, it looks a bit strange to Google, um, and they're certainly going to you know, pick up on that. 
Okay. Uh, I, I, you bring that's, that's a phenomenal point you bring up. I mean, obviously, logic can you know let everybody know they get know nothing about this, but they get to understand that. Yeah, I mean, if I get linked to from NewYorkTimes.com, dot com, that's a, that's a great deal, right? So I mean, of course, that's like awesome, right? And and I guess we will you know actually we're, we'll just start to be here in a second dig into trying to get you know these links from you know small, medium, and big fish, but. The second thing you mentioned is something that I don't think most people do understand or did not understand or know about is the relevancy. So um, as we get going here, it sounds like a good strategy is if you are going to be going towards link building and you know you're just getting going and it's going to be hard to get the attention of these you know awesome huge sites, it, go relevancy. And mm -hmm. that that's going to be a good place for people to start and, and realistically do get link backs by by going after you know relevant you know on topic it makes sense you know type of uh, link building so that that that's a phenomenal point you bring up thanks thanks for um, clearing that up yeah I, well, think, I think that's going to help people yeah and if we think really about what Google are trying to determine um, they want to understand the authority of a particular website within a particular um, industry and if you know that website is being mentioned and linked to um, uh, you know consecutively you know many many times over by other established trustworthy websites within that space then it sends a very strong signal to Google that hey this website too um, is an authority they're trustworthy um, they are endorsed by other people within that industry so it will send very strong signals to them um, so yeah super important um, few other things that might af might affect kind of the value of links one um is a is just kind of a technical thing there's this idea uh, or concept called um no follow and do follow links um and that's basically controlled by the linking website and um the linking website effectively can choose to you know pass authority and endorse the page they're linking to or they can choose um, not to endorse and pass no authority to the page that they link to um, the idea of this is mainly to be used for you know um, maybe instances where you know um, websites have you know have purchased or got sponsored listings on a site um, you know those types of links shouldn't pass any value so the linking website should set a no follow attribute to that um, but also it will be used in instances like um, blog comment systems and such places like that where you know no value should really be passed um, if someone happens just to mention a url in the the comments it's not really an endorsement um, mm -hmm. so um, that's something to look out for most editorial links will be do follow um, certain instances will be no follow so do follow generally are the ones that you want to get because they they, they pass more value um, mm -hmm. a few other factors then will be the placement of the link on the site um, again links within editorial content um, are going to pass more value than let's say a link hidden away in the footer or sidebar of a website you know, if it's mm -hmm. in with the content, Google are going to value that a bit more. Um, and then another factor they look at is actually what the text in the link says. This is known as um, anchor text. And mm -hmm. um, what that text says will um, also, you know, give greater or lesser degrees of um, strength in terms of the signal that's passed. Um, yeah, yeah. So to touch on that, to kind of... I always try to break this down, you know, from super advanced people to people who are just, you know, really getting into it. And uh, what what I, what you're saying, James, there is if somebody is going to link to you, you might as well ask them, you know, if you can, like if you have a great piece of content, that says, oh, I'd love to link, you know, this, or I'd like to include it, or if you start to develop a relationship, don't tell them not to say click here. Tell them to say, um, you know. James James SEO services, you know, yeah. rather than click here in in the hyperlink, the click here part, click the James SEO services part, and um, that's or even something more applicable or whatever. But basically, the kind of words that you're going for with the keywords, ask them to link those word hyperlink those words actually on their page. That's going to be uh, a lot more beneficial than just a, a click here. Is that is that basically what you're saying there? Exactly, yeah. So, um, in sense, Google are going to read the um, 
text itself and they will get context from that text about what the topic is of the page mm -hmm. being linked to um so you're right i mean if you know if we think about it in terms of you know um you know brand names you know if i'm linking to you david and i use the word magnificent in the actual text link that tells google that your entity your website you know has the name has the the branding magnificent and it will send a stronger clue to them that you know that's what they should be showing you up in the search results for um so if you can you know help to influence the text included in those um anchor text links that's going to help with your with your seo okay awesome all right now to the good stuff and the stuff that i am really interested in learning for you let's talk about getting outside links um, I, I know that there's probably you know a few best practices, probably a handful of the your favorite ways of going about it. Um, so I'd like for you to really dig in here and, and just talk about some of the best ways to to accomplish you know getting some links. Yeah, cool. Um, my gosh, there's there's um, a ton of options. I think probably the best place to start would be um, a link building strategy that's often referred to as link reclamation. And that's literally finding opportunities where third-party websites are already mentioning your brand or referring to your content but haven't linked to your website and then going out and contacting them and then asking them to add a link back to your web property. Um, and that's a super you know, super easy win. There's, there's a bunch of tools that will allow you to identify those places. And then it's just a matter of using some good old fashioned email outreach to, you know, contact those website owners and then get them to actually link through to your site. What are those tools? Uh, the Probably the best ones would be um, Moz. Um, we mentioned them already. They've actually got a, a tool that's actually built for this so it'll go out and look for mentions of your brand name that haven't um, included a link and then they'll um, give you a list of those um, mm -hmm. um, ahrefs is another good tool for this um, they have a nice alert system where you can put in your brand name or other keywords that you want to get notified about and anytime a piece of content is posted they will let you know and you can go then and check whether any links have been placed um, and probably the third one's mention that's a tool that I quite like um, that monitors social um, shares as well as links and that will again notify you anytime that someone mentions your brand and then you can go out and check if they've actually linked to you or not okay um, should we roll on? Do you want some more? <laughs> yeah. No. No. Oh God. I. Yeah. I. 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 I, I, I want. I want you to turn your your brain inside out on this and and, and see what we got. So yeah. Keep going. Cool. Uh, I guess the next ones would fall in a kind of a loose topic um, that I would refer to as self managed link building and these types of links perhaps don't pass as much value as sort of genuine editorial links that you know, appear without you having to actually go out and find them. But these types of links are more easily built. Um, so in terms of how self-managed link building is done, that's essentially where you typically create the link or are involved in creating it. Um, so some classic examples of this would be guest blogging, for instance. Um, mm -hmm. If you can identify, you know, really good um, high authority websites in your market, um, that mm -hmm. would um, accept guest post contributions. Um, mm -hmm. You can then produce a piece of content um, for that site and you will typically have the payoff of either being able to kind of link through to your own property maybe once or so within the content based on editorial guidelines or at least you'll get a link from your um, sort of author bio that might appear um, below the post itself. Um, now that's really it's really easy to do you just need to build up a you know a, a good portfolio of content that you've created um, or maybe even just produce a piece of content and then send it off to relevant websites to try and get it accepted um, but great because you have um, almost entire control over the links that are placed and where they're placed to and also then like you were talking about earlier David you can control even the anchor text that's being used in those posts um, <laughs> So guest blogging is really good, and there's some other strategies around that. I mean, whoa, like, whoa, whoa, yeah, let's let, <laughs> let's let's dig into this. Let's dig into this more because, from my experiences, like the first thing you mentioned, you know, people are mentioning you. Yeah, that would be the low hanging fruit. But I think that's low hanging fruit for people who ha are mildly, at, at the minimum, mildly established. Yeah, and, and, and most realistically, 
pretty well established if people are going to be mentioning you, right? So you're talking larger brands, maybe bleeding down to medium brands, right? But for the small business, you know, that that's not happening. Or for the small, you know, that's that's probably not happening enough, you know, for you to have a big strategy, right? I mean, it's great that you pointed it out because it's going to apply to a lot of people, but not everybody. Now, this next point you mentioned, though, the blogger outreach. Th- this is something that I-, I believe has the most opportunity for people, at least in my experience here. And this is something that we've been digging into greatly. Um, not not too long here, but over the last couple months, really, really starting to dig into it. So have a general understanding of it. But I would love to talk about some best practices, some best tools to use, you know, um, how, how to find it. Uh, you know, I, I believe you can even go on Google, and now that you might tell me this isn't the best way anymore, but you can, you know, Google link roundups and things like that, aggregator sites or whatever. Um, and I believe that there's other, you know, from digging into it further, I know that there's other tools that help you identify and, and reach out to people and all of that. So I, I really, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I really think that this is the most realistic way for people to do it. And, I, and I'd love for you to paint a, a, you know, a complete story of the strategy built around that, be it utilizing tools or best practices or whatnot, or you can say, Dave, this is good, but there's other ones that are better. So, but I um, would love to get your your take on on, on all of that and, and dig into this uh, further. Yeah, cool. Um, so, I guess some ideas on guest blogging, um, especially if you're starting out with it, um, would be to start at a level, if you like, of site that you can relatively easily access. Um, sure, the biggest opportunities might be on Forbes.com or Entrepreneur, um, but it's possibly unlikely that if you're new to this and you've you know, not done a lot of writing in the past that you would you know, get your content accepted there. So um, it's good to get a bit of a ramp up on this. Um, if you're a local business, it would be great to start even with more localized websites. Um, you know, perhaps there are sort of industry specific sites um, or locally specific websites that accept um, guest contributions. And um, you can reach out to those by contacting the editor and, and, and get your content in front of them. Now, it might sound a bit daunting, but is actually easier done um, than you might think, because typically most editors or content producers are lacking most in content. Like they're really looking out for good stuff to you know post to their website. Um, so if you can come in and be the industry expert on whatever it is you know that you do really well and provide great content on that specialized topic and it's relevant to the website, then you will find that as long as your content's you know pretty good, um, there is a strong chance that content will get um, accepted. Okay. And how did, how would one go about finding those? people is it just you know searching on the web or is there, is there any how, how like say you were you know an eye doctor right and, and you're you've uh, you've undertook a content marketing approach and you have all this good content written how, how how would you go about finding the places where somebody would be like oh yeah shoot yeah this is good info and you're right by the way um these people you know they're looking for good content so this is really a a genuine partnership here so nobody should feel sheepish as long as you have good stuff to send now it's about finding those people Uh, do you have any advice on that yeah I would just um, first of all start with the obvious ones and you know if you're um, you know within your industry you'll know of the trade publications most likely you know the the sort of the industry roundup um, sites the local you know websites that are relevant and on topic to your particular industry you can start with them um, if you want to branch out a little bit further than that then you can start to use um, various Google search strings um, to look for relevant sites um, and perhaps you know if we do some show notes David I can sort of pass a few of these over to you but you could um, search something like in title colon which um, allows Google just to look at the keywords or the search terms within the title of a particular um, web page and you can include um, guest post plus whatever your industry is or your topic is um, so if I was looking for you know um, let's say SEO um, guest post um, opportunities. I would put in title colon um, guest post plus SEO, and you know Google should return then 
you know, majority of the sites that are accepting, you know, guest posts on that topic. And then you just okay. want to go check them out. And if they look good and a good match, then you can approach them. Awesome. Cool. Um, before we get going, any other, any, anything else you want to add to, to this section of uh, strategy? Uh, yeah, probably the other one I would look at, which would be especially relevant for um, local businesses, would be um, directory submissions. And um, when I say directory submissions, what we're talking about here is um, localized, you know, business directories. Um, not the, you know, the sort of the mass um, directories, you know, the low quality, you know, spammy directories that might get you in trouble for link building. What we're talking about here is, you know, sites like, you know, your local um, online yellow pages. Um, we're talking um, about, um, you know, some of the the sort of the social sites, um, you know, Foursquare, these types of places and go and getting your site listed there. Um, you know, filling out the um, guidelines, making sure you've got your website listed, your services listed, etc., etc. Now, these types of links are probably not going to pass a huge amount of value, but what they do is they increase the strength or the reliability of the information that surrounds your business. Um, so, if you're a local lawyer and you've got really um, consistent and well-crafted entries on, you know, various local business directories, all saying the same thing that your you know a lawyer's practice in whatever city and this is your website and this is your telephone number and all of that information is consistent that sends a stronger signal to google that they can rely on the information about your business which in turn is going to help your um, overall rankings um, and those things are, are super easy to obviously build you just have to go and you know find the sites and fill out the information very very easy to do okay awesome uh any other any of the ideas for uh link building outreach you've, you've given a lot already but yeah any, anything else that you'd like to dig into in this regards uh yeah maybe we should just touch sort of briefly on um you know content driven link building okay. um and sure. there's, there's a whole bunch of you know different types of content that you can you know produce whether it be you know really good quality in-depth you know, feature rich blog content, whether it be, you know, infographic content, you know, um, video content, whatever it would be. Um, if you are in the position to go out and create the very best content in your market, that's perfectly positioned um, to be the type of content that the link creators in your market tend to link out to and share. And then you go and create that content and put it in front of them. That's when you get the best value. This is like the high yield um, link building strategies, but they are the high effort ones as well, because you have to put a lot of time into creating really good content, um, researching it first, and then putting that content out in front of you know influencers who would then want to you know maybe feature it on their site or at least link out to it in future posts that they produce. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, we could get into strategies, but the, essentially the concept is um, find what content has worked in the past in your industry. Um, go out and find ways to improve on that content um, and then reach out to the people that have linked to that content in the past and typically linked to content on the same topic and put your fantastic content in front of them. Um, and that is, you know, really content plus outreach um, for link building, which is typically what most, um, you know, in the trenches SEOs will rely on, but it is quite a lot of um, effort, but will yield the highest results. Well, yeah, it's a lot of effort, but, you know, circling back to Google, I mean, we got to go where Google goes, right? And where Google has gone and continues to go and will continue to go is rewarding people who are doing it the right way. And that's sometimes we look at these big platforms and you automatically think that they're just all in it for the money and of course they're in it for the money I mean anybody who runs a business part of the reason is 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 in it for the money but what Google really wants you know where, where they make their hay is a, is a good user experience and if they didn't do that then the yahoos and the bings if they were providing it would take over so Google really 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 does and, and they've really walked to the walk on this is they start they've really cracked down on not things not doing it the right way the black hat the 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 mass spam link building that you used to just be able to hire somebody and do now they want to reward people who are doing it the you know the you know, with great content, and, and when people see something and they click on it, then they're actually 
being directed to what they think that they're being directed to. And then they, and then on top of that, they like what they read and they were it was helpful and educational and everything. So you, you mentioned it's hard, but I don't want to sway people from that because yeah, it's it's the hard way, but it's 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 truly gonna be one of the only ways, I would guess, in five or ten years, I only can imagine that they're gonna have completely cracked down on any sort of ill advised practices. You know, yeah. it takes time to kind of Get rid of all, all of, you know. Get rid of all of it, but um, it, it is. I think it's the current and the future. So it might be hard, but it's it's the way to go. Um, if if you're going to want to get in line with where Google is moving, and, and do you see it that same way? I mean, do you kind of see the future um, going that way with with the search engines and Google in particular? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the you know the engines are getting you know more and more intelligent, and um, you know literally day by day, week by week, they're able to identify you know true signals versus um, fake signals. So it really is looping back to what we said at the start, actually about creating something that genuinely deserves to rank within the search results and then ensuring that um, that's marketed effectively and put out in front of the right people who can then send the signals to Google by linking to it that would reinforce that that post or piece of content should rank top of the search results. Um, so it is a, yeah, I mean, it's, it is a bit of hard work, but like anything, building a good business, you know, creating a fantastic product, um, you know, the hard work is what's going to pay off. There are no shortcuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's not a, yeah, and unless you're a humongous company with a ton of followers, it's not a build it and they will come. You got to have your outreach. You got to have your content distribution plan in place, and and you know as far as getting in front of the right people, you're talking about the signals, meaning people going there, spending some time, clicking through your website, and all of that. Are those the signals that you were touching on? Yeah, um, I mean they would be the sort of secondary signals, um, but the primary signals would literally be, you know, then having. Um, those influencers that you reach out to, you know, mentioning and linking to your content. Um, you know, mm-hmm. once that happens, you're going to start to get referral traffic coming through to your site who are going to then be, you know, sticking around, looking at the content um, and sending those secondary signals. And then, of course, once you start to rank, Google are also then going to be able to measure people clicking through from the search results and what their experience is like. Um, on your page and if they stick around long uh, and read the content or whether they click the back button and go to the next result you know all of these things then sort of layer over you know over the top of each other and strengthen the signal that Google have um, surrounding your particular web page gotcha now uh, what about bad links is there such a thing as like links that are linking to that actually hurt you Uh, yeah there is unfortunately Uh, yeah I mean if you do anything like what we described at the start, you know, paying for links, using automation, doing any of these um, um, practices that are against Google's terms and conditions, um, you could find yourself in trouble. So, of course, it goes without saying that you, you know, shouldn't engage in those practices yourself. Um, But also, you know, there is the possibility that um, if someone really dislikes you, that they... um, could try and get your site in trouble by implementing a negative SEO strategy, um, and, and that would literally be building, um, you know, bad links, you know, to your site um, as opposed to trying to build good links to their own. Um, and it does happen from time to time. Uh, thankfully, there's not too many shady people out there. But I'd certainly advise um, whether it's you know inadvertently that you've acquired some dodgy links yourself, or if someone else has built them to your site, you should. Be in the practice of just keeping an eye on the types of sites that do link to you um, and just alert yourself to any you know sites that link to you that just don't seem right, um, whether that be because the topic of their website is irrelevant to yours. Um, you know, if you start to get links through to your site with um, anchor text um, that's just irrelevant to the topic of your page or if they just land up on really junky low quality sites um, you should probably then look at having those links removed if you can how, how do you, how can somebody you know ha- have a way to quickly notice which of these are bad links and, and then rectify and get rid of them uh, there's I mean basically you have to just identify all of the links that are um, pointing to your site and then um, use some um, I guess just use some good sort of general thought to identify the the bad ones um, and those would be basically any links with the criteria we just described there 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, mass forum links, you know, low quality places like in um, forum comments or in the footer of websites or sidebars or um, these types of places, all those links are um, from low quality web properties. And whilst there are tools that will kind of grade links and identify potential spam links, nothing is going to be actually just looking through the websites that are linking to your site and identifying the dodgy ones um, and probably the best tools to do that would be a couple of those that we mentioned already um, uh, Moz has got a good backlink analysis tool called Open Site Explorer um, Ahrefs is fantastic um, for identifying all of the linking sites and also Majestic SEO is very good um, in fact Majestic SEO is quite nice because it will also categorize the topic of website that is linking to you so if you've got again a cookery blog and you're getting all of these you know links from you know business websites or you know automotive websites um, you can see just by the grading of, of those um, sites and the topics that Majestic identify them as as whether they're they're relevant or irrelevant to your site okay yeah that'd be good for somebody who might have accidentally hired somebody to do it and they don't know what's going on that'd be a good way for them to go back and look so yeah, yeah that's that that's awesome now what about uh, realistic expectations. Somebody's getting into this. They do it for a month. And they're like, nothing's happening, right? <laughs> what 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 kind of time frame? What what can somebody expect if they're starting from scratch and, and they're looking to have this strategy take effect? What kind of time frame? Uh, well, I don't know. I know it's going to be a tough question for you, James. I know it's 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 a big, but just in general, can you just set some expectations for people? Uh, yeah, this is the classic SEO question, especially right. if you're in the agency world. How long is it going to be before I rank number one? Right, um, right. It, it is. I mean, it's a super tough one to answer because um, there are, you know, there are many, many factors at, at play. Yeah. Um, you know, Google have got 200 plus ranking signals um, that they, you know, they look at. So it's pretty. It's a pretty complex um, topic. What I would say is that um, if you've got a, a brand new site or a very young site, um, it's likely that these um, types of efforts are going to take a little bit longer. Um, mm -hmm. Google certainly place more you know, trust in sites that have been online and established for a longer period of time and have just gained some natural authority. Um, so if you've got an already established website and then you implement you know, link you know, effective link building then you'll probably garner results much more quickly um, if your sites you know newer then it's probably going to take more time um, what I would say though specifically around link building there's been some really good studies on this um, you know the average length of time it takes from when a link is placed to when ranking changes typically take effect as a result of that link being placed can be anything between seven to ten weeks on wow. average um, That's just that. Wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, um, it can actually be a, a, a rather long period. Now, it's not it's not always the case because, like anything in SEO, you know, one no one signal can be um, viewed in isolation. There's lots of other factors that then um, play on an individual signal. But typically, it is going to take that uh, that amount of time. Um, and of course, you know, just by doing more of this, each each additional link that you build will add more authority on the ones prior. So, you know, as you gain a bit of traction, you'll start to see results, you know, kind of hockey stick up in a in a in a faster fashion. But there will be a little bit of lead in time where you need to, you know, push hard with this. You know, a bit like con you know, just generally content marketing, you need to just keep pushing it for a while until you start to see the payoffs. Gotcha. And then also, I think once you're getting going, you can use some of those tools, you know, Moz or SEMrush, to identify which of the keywords, keyword phrases that you have realistic chance of of ranking for faster. Yeah. Um, so I think you're, all, all, everything we're talking about needs to start with that link strategy in general. Look at the volume, look at the, you know, relevancy, and you know, make sure you're not you know, going way off, you know, you want to look for the keywords that make sense for you and your company. And then you, those tools will help you find out which ones are the lower hanging fruit opportunities. So uh, yeah. obviously you can rank faster for some and, you know, really hard for others. For instance, yeah. you know, cars for sale. <laughs> Good luck, right? <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. You know, cars for, you know, XYZ type of car for sale in XYZ city. Hey, if you're seeing a hundred people a month search for that, we, you can develop a strategy around that. 
So um, yeah, that that's kind of an, another factor that plays into plays into effect as well. Yeah. Well, James, awesome, 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 awesome. I really appreciate everything. Uh, all the wisdom and all the information, the tools, the strategy, everything we've talked about and cleared the air on some things. Do, do you have any, any parting thoughts uh, before we move on to how people can continue to learn from you? Um, I was going to say one thing and then you stole it from me in that last comment. I was going to say go out and do oh, some – I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go out and do <laughs> some, um, some keyword, re- keyword research and identify the opportunities that um, you, know, you can get those – um, quicker wins with um, and it really is in SEO it's all about finding the opportunities that are going to get you the best return for time invested you know and that is going to be a, a gauge of how competitive those keywords you know are that you're trying to rank for how much traffic you know you can expect to acquire um, once you do start ranking and also based on kind of the level of authority your site has now versus the strength of sites that are ranking you'll also get a gauge of like how quickly it will be until you can you know start to appear um so yeah keyword reach is good and um i would just uh, probably a, a good um sort of part and piece of advice would be just be very conscious about the you know types of topics and content that are being <laughs> you know, shared most in your market. And if you can really dial in on the hot topics that garner the most interest, then you've got the strongest likelihood of your own content working. So don't try and reinvent the wheel. Go after the topics that, um, you know, your market is really interested in and then use sort of proven formulas that have worked in the past and just try and improve on those so that you can garner stronger results. That's a great point. I believe Marcus Sheridan said it uh, as well. Uh, it's just, just stuck with me. It's people are like, well, that's already been written about, and he says, well, they haven't heard it from you, yeah. right? And uh, uh, good luck finding something in this world that hasn't been written about, right? But you can put your own spin on it. You can put your own take on it, and, and you can get that in front. So I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's a that's a big thing out there with people. They're like, well, you know, that's not original. Well. It's, you can have your original thoughts on a topic that's not original. So I, I mean, you make a great point. See what people are interested in and then, then put your spin on it, put your take on it. So that, that, that's a phenomenal point that you brought up. I'm glad you touched on that. Well, you obviously are somebody that people need to continue to learn from, James. There's a lot to this. <laughs> and uh, I, think, I think it's a deep, deep topic, yeah. So how can people continue to learn from you? Uh, the primary place I post content to is um, our main um, SEO agency site, which is seosherpa.com. Um, you know, we produce some pretty in-depth content um, over there. Um, for a general kind of look at everything that we do, and hopefully by the time um, this goes live, David, we'll have a, a new site up that will easily navigate people to those places would be veravo.com um, and um, you know as a business here we do um, SEO services um, for other agencies wholesale um, we do um, you know SEO direct to end customers and then we also do AdWords management so if, you know people need some help on any of those topics um, veravo.com uh, would be the place to go and it will direct you off to the, the relevant site okay and just for the listeners it's v-e-r-a-v-o dot com that's right all right James, thank you so much. Looking forward to, to continuing to dig into this topic in the future. And But until then, have yourself an awesome day. Thanks, David. All right, thank you.